Okay, and we're about to move into our next session. Uh, this is our first live tool demo of the day, and so far, so good, uh, but things might go um, a little skew if. So we've got backup options and the backup options and the backup options, and we'll see what ends up happening. Um, I will hand over to these guys pretty sharpish because their tool is, oh, their tool, that's going to sound a bit dodgy, but never mind. Um, the project that they work on has already been mentioned in the past two talks. Um, there was an entire slide on the last one that basically li listed every single one of the things that was involved in this project. Uh, the project Amass does um, focus on automation of network mapping and asset mapping and asset discovery. Um, and without further ado, I will hand over to Jeff. Thanks very much. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. So yes, this is about OWASP Amass. So when I first started doing this, I, I dreaded having to do asset discovery. It took too long, too many tools. It was uh, cumbersome. <clears throat> and that, that's what caused a mass to be born. It, it, ju we just needed a smoother way to do this, an easier way to do this. And all the years that I had spent in this field, which is 17 years, I shouldn't reveal the, my secrets, but <laughs> um, it just taught me to write my own tools when necessary. I, didn't, I don't like to rely on uh, what's already out there. If, I, uh, if it's not suiting my needs or meeting my requirements. So I started working on this. It seemed like a lot of other people uh, were happy to receive it as well. I'm Jeff Foley. This is Anthony Rhodes. He is a major contributor to this project. He joined so he could bring his advanced penetration testing skills and uh, software development as well to this project and enhance the capabilities. And regardless of what your current experience with this is, we're going to be covering everything from the basic usage of this initially, but then we're going to dive in pretty quick to how to get more out of this. Because we've been getting some interesting feedback from people just saying we'd like to go further with a mass now. And with that, I'll uh, hand it over to Anthony. All right. Um, so this is too small. I can bump it up. Too small. Okay. Sorry. Boop, boop, boop. That's good. Oh, that's too big. Twenty-two. Mm, okay, that should work. Hopefully. All right. So I'm going to be doing a demo of a mass today. Uh, I'm just going to show you a basic enumeration right now. Um, I think most people would start out uh, with this command, uh, the enum subcommand. Uh, so, and just pardon the uh, slow network connection, but. Uh, so MASS has several subcommands, um, a couple of them for enumerations, and then a couple of them like support tools, you know, tracker, database, uh, visualization tool. Um, so we're just going to start off with a basic enumeration um, where we're going to give it a domain name, and we're going to try to find subdomains off of that. Um, so I'm going to give it the dash source flag to show you know where all these uh, subdomains are coming from. There's a lot of open source intelligence uh, feeds that we're kind of pulling from. Uh, we also have brute forcing and alterations. Um, and then I'm going to tell it to give me the IP because it, uh, it goes out and resolves them all. So while that's thinking, sometimes it takes a little bit to get the first results. Uh, but the, the way a mass works, and I think what sets it apart from a lot of the other subdomain enumeration tools is that uh, you know, a lot of those tools will grab from the open source feeds and they'll do brute forcing, um, but then that's it and it's done. Uh, what a mass does is whenever it resolves a name, it feeds it back into the enumeration and so then it performs brute forcing and alterations on that. Um, so now that we're getting results, uh, I can talk to those. Um, so yeah, so you can see uh, 
There's, we got threat crowd, cert SH, you know, that's certificates. Um, way back, we crawl archives uh, and grab stuff there. Alterations, um, I'll get more into that later. That's uh, a little heavy <laughs> right now. Um, buffer over is the Rapid7 project sonar uh, DNS scans. So that's just a uh, API that someone threw up. Um, so that gives a lot of results. Uh, Rapid7 did a lot of good work there. Um, and then we got Markov model. Uh, that's like kind of similar to alterations. He uses uh, Markov model, like Markov chains, to uh, try to, you know, guess based on the, uh, you know, previous input um, that's training the model. Um, so yeah, it, it'll keep going. Um, you can see, just if you like looking at this data, um, you can already see that like this organization has some patterns where, you know, we might be able to iterate that on that further. Um, and yeah, so like, let's see. Oh yeah, so like the CSTS3, CSTS4. Um, so yeah, it looks like alterations, you know, caught on to that and, you know, generated more hits. So whenever, uh, yeah, alterations supports a lot of different um, features that I've added in the past year. Um, originally, it focused on just like pulling numbers out and then, you know, flipping them to every other possible number and then adding numbers. Um, so like every time I saw a number, it basically generated a thousand more requests um, to ch because, you know, it's really common for people to just keep adding to the number, you know, when they have, you know, multiple uh, of these domains that are, you know, meant for the same purpose. Um, so the features that I added to alterations, you know, were um, doing something similar like that except with words. So if you see right here, we have uh, www-dev, and this is really common across like all organizations. You know, you'll have dash prod, dash test, and a bunch of those. Um, so a mass will look for those too. It f looks for subdomains that have dashes in them, and then it pulls out the first and last words, and then it has a word list of like 200 or so really common words that'll it'll throw in there in the place of dash dev um, to try to you know enumerate you know all the iterations of like this source so you get the dev the prod the test and all that um, so yeah let's see if this is done oh, still going okay yeah it's pretty fast um, this is default settings and it's like a uh, couple hundred a second. So um, you can crank that up. There's a setting for that where you can uh, increase how many connections it can support at a time. Um, ooh. All right, cool. So finished. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll talk about this output right here. Ooh, don't get mad at me. Okay. Tmox. Okay. Um, yeah, so during the whole enumeration, it's resolving all these IPs and it's grabbing, you know, the net blocks and the autonomous systems that are related. Uh, and then it, you know, throws all this into a graph database, you know, where all the relationships are preserved. Um, so you can, and then at the end, it uh, prints out all of the, uh, that information. So you can see, you know, how many hits you're getting uh, per net block. Um, so you can see, like, they have an AS uh, Utica College, which makes sense, it's utica.edu, uh, and that's where, that's the primary source of all their subdomains. Um, so yeah, you did this, so say you did this basic enumeration and you want to, like, take it a little further and try to discover, you know, more of this target, um, you know, beyond just looking at utica.edu. So, if Tmux wants to cooperate. Oh, come on. Okay. So, Amass has a subcommand called Intel. And this does uh, 
It basically tries to expand the scope of what you're looking at, whereas the enum um, just tries to find all the subdomains and assets within the scope you give it. Uh, so this will try to find um, domain names that are related to utica.edu. Uh, so we can give it, uh, we can like pull this AS number out and we can give it to the Intel command. Oop. We also want to give it the active command or the active flag too. Um, and what it'll do there is it'll pull the net block for that and then it'll do uh, like a reverse DNS and you know cert grabbing uh, to try to find uh, other domains. So. All right. Um, so yeah, while that's thinking, uh, Intel also supports uh, reverse who is. Uh, so if you're unfamiliar with that, uh, reverse who is, uh, there's, there's a, a ton of these uh, APIs out there um, and most of them cost money, unfortunately. Uh, but you know, the information's invaluable so that's why. <laughs> uh, so you know what reverse who is 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 you you can perform a who is on you know utica.edu and then you can grab email addresses like the admin and the tech contact and all that um, out of that and, and also name servers uh, when available in the who is information and then you can feed it into these reverse who is services and it'll give you all the domains that are registered you know with th those same details. Um, so really to be able to offer that kind of service you have to really scrape who is, um, which is really hard. Uh, unless you can somehow acquire, you know, uh, a bulk of the uh, who is information out there. And uh, I tried and it's, it's not feasible. <laughs> At least from home. Um, yeah, so uh, this command finished. Uh, it gave us a few other domains that uh, appear to be related. Like we got UC Fishing, uh, Utico College. Um, I guess probably typo squatting there. Uh, um, so yeah, I can show you the who is stuff. So. Oh no, too far. Who is? Uh, Dash D, Utica dot edu, and the place work. So there's only one service for, oh, yes, okay. There's only one service for reverse who is that uh, we support that's free, but it only gives you like the top 50 results. And sometimes they get angry and, you know, they rate limit and we don't really handle that exactly yet. So um, this morning when I was testing this out, you know, I got no results for that, but glad that I got results now. <laughs> so you see here that, you know, this gave us like a, a treasure trove of um, new domains uh, to look at. So and then we can throw these back into the enum command and, you know, try to get some domains for those. Um, so uh, earlier I picked out a few. Um, yeah, a few uh, like of what looked like um, they really own. Because sometimes you can get like, you know, especially in this case for a college, you can get like student websites. Um, like if they registered with their uh, their college email or something. So uh, this list for the Whois stuff, you really have to kind of like parse through yourself. Um, or you know, I mean, sometimes it's really obvious. Sometimes it's not. Um, yeah, so this is the list I grabbed. And then we're going to do uh, another enumeration, feeding that stuff in there. How are we doing on time? Oh, we're doing pretty good. Okay. Oop. All right. So now it's in a file, so we can do the DF flag. All right, what else did I want to do? Source. P. Throw in brute forcing now. I don't. I didn't do brute forcing last time. Ooh. Oh come on! This is killing me. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Don't you hate slow SSH connections? Oh, man. All right. Um, so there's some other... So like I was talking with the uh, alteration stuff earlier, uh, just very recently I added the ability to, on top of supplying word lists um, for alterations and brute forcing, you can now uh, throw in hashcat style masks into those word lists or you can just throw them on the command line. Uh, so we'll do that too. Um, doo -doo. So yeah, if, if you're unfamiliar uh, with m how hashcat masks work, um, you know, hashcat supports what's called a mask attack and essentially it allows you to put wild, wild cards into your word lists um, you know, where this uh, question mark A refers to like any character that's possible. Uh, for DNS, it's like 37 different characters. Um, or you can do like dash L for letter. That's like A through Z. Uh, or you can do dash D or question mark D for digit, uh, 0 through 9. Um, yeah, I'm just going to do some basic ones. And dash WM. Um, does it for brute force. And then uh, dash AWM uh, throws it into alterations. Okay. All right, so that's going to think a little bit. Um, so like I said earlier, the, all, everything's stored into a graph database. And what's cool about that is that, you know, we can support a lot of uh, support functions uh, for that, like tracking. So you can track between uh, different enumerations. So say you ran one last week, you want to run one this week. Uh, it'll, you know, tell you, you know, which ones are found um, that are new, you know, which ones are modified so you can see if, like, something's changing IPs. Uh, that might be more useful if you're, like, trying to map out a threat actor or something, see if they're trying to move their infrastructure. Um, and, and there's also visualization. Um, but another really cool thing that we can do with that is, if you have a previous enumeration for a domain, for a mass, uh, and then you run a new enumeration, it'll pull all the names that discovered previously and throw them into the new enumeration right in the beginning. So uh, that adds a little more consistency and it also just speeds it up a little bit. But yeah, how are we doing on time? Yeah, like 15 minutes, right? Um, yeah, uh, so I guess uh, while that's running, I can uh, talk about the visualization stuff. <laughs> so uh, this is uh, enumeration of the OWASP, um, OWASP.org domain. Um, so this is pretty much exactly how it's stored in the graph database. Um, yeah, this lets you, you know, kind of explore and, uh, you know, all the relationships between everything. And you can see, like, clusters where, so you got, like, OWASP.org, and then a subdomain would be, uh, you yeah, know, like, docs and gapps, and I can see where this is going, mail. Um, so, yeah, obviously that all that points to, you know, Google Apps. Um, and you can see that here, uh, where it all eventually, you know, goes from, to, you know, IPs, net blocks, uh, and then eventually Google's AS, or one of Google's ASs. Uh, but yeah, this is really cool. Um, you can, a lot of times in much larger enumerations, you can, you know, discover patterns or, you know, see, you know, where they're using third parties like I just showed, or you can see acquisitions where, you know, you acquired a company and that'll be like a huge cluster, you know, way off. Um, if it hasn't been fully migrated yet into, you know, existing companies' infrastructure. 
Um, and it wiggles. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's just a snapshot of the enumeration. Uh, but we've definitely explored options of like streaming uh, the data so we can get like live feeds, especially for like larger environments where an enumeration might take days or something. It'd be really cool to have that kind of visibility. Um, yeah. Mm. Let's see if this found anything good. Mm. Hmm. Oh yeah. That's a good point. All right. Yeah, I'm just going to kill this now. Um, so yeah, it was like kind of uh, showing you how you can, you know, go from, you know, a single domain and, you know, really kind of iterate on that. And you can go even further. Um, as you discover more patterns, you can keep feeding it in. Um, so now I'm just going to, you know, back up and I'll go over some of the configuration options. Um, so this is our example config, and it has, I believe, everything we support. Um, so yeah, active mode, that's grabbing certs and doing zone tra transfers uh, where possible. Um, by default, it's active mode is off. Um, there is a passive mode, which will just grab the uh, open source uh, intelligence feeds and it won't do any resolution. So the default is kind of like this in between, uh, between passive and active, um, where you're only dealing with the DNS servers uh, and not actually poking the uh, target. So this, uh, this maximum DNS queries, uh, you can ramp that up to, you know, pretty high, uh, like 100,000 if you really want to improve the performance. Um, uh, I mean, what this means is it's how many uh, concurrent DNS queries can be performed. It's not, you know, how many queries per second. So if you put in like 100,000, you're not going to get 100,000 queries per second. It's just, you know, how concurrent it is. Um, if you want, you can like tell it to you know give you the unresolvable ones by default. The enumeration only prints out things that resolve. Um, yeah, you can give it. Uh, this is the default list of resolvers that it reaches out to. Uh, a lot of the you know common public ones, but you, you can give it uh, a list of a thousand or so. I mean as much as your system can support in terms of file descriptors. Uh, uh, what we like to do is grab the uh, public DNS, you know, service list, server list, uh, and throw it in there. And uh, pretty recently we uh, wrote some code in there to uh, actively determine, you know, which servers are, you know, give us, giving us bad information or just not responding, you know, because maybe they're rate limiting. Or stuff. So there's an election uh, setup, you know, where we'll, each request will try on three different servers, and then, you know, if we find that one gives a different result than, you know, the other two, it'll, you know, score down the one that gave the bad result. And then once it gets below a threshold, uh, then we just remove it from the enumeration. Um, it also helps, you know, if you don't have any DNS connectivity um, to any of these servers, it'll tell you pretty instantly now, whereas before it wouldn't. Uh, da -da -da. So yeah, uh, say you're, you're in assessment and you have like some subdomains that you wanted to uh, exclude because they're specifically out of scope, you can do that here too. Um, or if you're just weary of some of the data sources, like you don't want to reach out to them, 
Uh, for whatever reason, you can disable them too. Um, and then the last thing I'm going to go over. Um, oh well. Here's all the brute force and uh, alteration settings. Uh, I think I'm running out of time pretty soon. But uh, basically, you can modify if you want for brute forcing. You can tell it, you know, if you want to do recursive brute forcing, um, and you know how often you want to uh, recurse, um, or like under what circumstances you want to recurse, because. Uh, sometimes you don't necessarily want to recurse on everything because that'll generate uh, way too much traffic. Um, you can see here there's a ton of uh, flags for tweaking the alterations um, where you, you can tell it not to add words and not to flip words or flip numbers, um, which that's just like an in place substitution rather than appending or prepending. Um, and for brute force and alterations, you can give uh, multiple word lists and it'll deduplicate them down um, to a single word list that it'll use. And then finally, we have a bunch of commercial APIs that we support and uh, this is where you put them if you have them. Um, so some really good ones, we have uh, Census, uh, Alien Vault is free. Um, we have passive total, that's a good one. Security trails, Shodan. Uh, Twitter is all right. It searches tweets for subdomains. Uh, it's not really that effective, but it's a cool thing to do. <laughs> uh, Cisco umbrella uh, and virus total. Um, but yeah, that's uh, about it. Uh, any questions? No. All right. Oh, you got a question? Hmm? Oh, uh, no. <laughs> he wants my Shonen API key. Yeah. So as I, I mentioned in the beginning, you know, Anthony is one of our contributors. We're always looking for more contributors. This uh, project wouldn't be where it is today without them. And uh, also, Contributing can mean more than just writing code for this. We're, uh, we have quite a few testers that are constantly helping us improve this uh, project. Uh, we're always looking for people to help us with documentation and things like that or uh, ways to help people use it better. So if anyone is uh, interested in contributing, please let, let us know. Uh, join us on our Discord or reach out to us on Twitter and uh, we can discuss it. Yeah, so you you asked if you can specify the ports that it reaches out for like certificates and stuff. Uh, yeah, you can, so in the config file you can, um, under network settings there's a port and you can give any number of those um, that you want. Uh, we have a couple in there. Um, I think by default we just do 443, right? Yeah. Um, and I think you can do. Specify the command line as well. Comma separated. Yeah, and on the command line, you can do comma separated port values, um, all with that dash port option. And this is our GitHub page. Oh, wasp a mass. It's pretty easy. But yeah, thanks for uh, coming.